patients who take 500 milligrams a day for six months of this vitamin can benefit from significantly lower cholesterol and triglyceride level and significantly better kidney function. Gathering here, according to research, cholesterol levels are one of the most important predictors of kidney disease progression. The higher the total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, the higher the chances for a patient to go into renal failure. And to make things worse, statins, the most used cholesterol-lowering medication, have also been found to cause kidney damage over time. Now the silver lining. Patients that find ways to keep their cholesterol levels in the right range naturally are often able to stop or even reverse kidney disease by greatly reducing proteinuria. Today we will see exactly how to do that. There are lifestyle changes, dietary tweaks, remedies and also a vitamin that can really help. Question: Why should you care about cholesterol? Guys, if your target is to improve your kidney health, you need to keep bad cholesterol levels below 100 mg per dl and below 70 mg per dl if you have diabetes. High cholesterol is one of the worst health dangers of our times, especially for those with CKD. You see, in people with kidney disease, blood vessels are already narrower than normal. If we add cholesterol to the equation, things will get bad very quickly. Cholesterol travels throughout the body and it picks up all sorts of inflammatory substances. Then it dumps itself into the artery walls as plaque. These are your renal arteries, the vessels that bring oxygen and nourishment to your kidneys. You think your kidneys are getting enough blood now? So it's clear that on the road to a better kidney health, cholesterol levels should be taken care of naturally. And there is an incredibly powerful vitamin that can really help. While this vitamin is usually prescribed to kidney patients as a way to keep phosphorus levels under control, it also has amazing properties against this lipidemia. More about this later on in this video. And this vitamin can really help, but it's impossible to solve the cholesterol problem completely with just one vitamin. There are also a couple of things about the way to eat to lower cholesterol you should know. How to eat to lower your cholesterol? Diet is key for lowering cholesterol levels, but for many people eating right means the learning a lot of what they think they know. You see, the big problem about cholesterol is the misinformation. There are a lot lies surrounding cholesterol you should know about. I overheard something that I think you should know about. The food industry has been trying to sell low cholesterol versions of foods as healthy for decades now and with commercial success. Cholesterol, it can come from bow tie pasta, but also from your grandfather. The problem is that this success comes at the expense of your own health. Fact, many no cholesterol foods are high in other types of bad fats, such as saturated and trans fats. So even if there is no cholesterol, the food is still going to be very bad for you because unlike dietary cholesterol, trans fats are what is actually going to raise your LDL or bad cholesterol. Trans fats sometimes listed on food labels as partially hydrogenated vegetable oil are often used in margarines and store-bought cookies, crackers, and cakes. Avoid them and be very careful with low cholesterol foods. Another myth that marketing departments don't want you to know about. They always tell you that fats are the enemy and that sugar has nothing to do with cholesterol levels. And this looks pretty straightforward, right? I mean, how can sugar possibly make your blood cholesterol levels worse? In a recent study, sugar consumption didn't just raise several markers for cardiovascular disease such as triglycerides and inflammation markers. It also decreased the HDL or good cholesterol levels in participants. Another study found out that women who eat more added sugar tend to have higher levels of LDL or bad cholesterol. Researchers explain this by showing us that sugar is proven to cause inflammation. Inflammation can turn a cholesterol problem into a life-threatening issue. So disregard as much as possible what advertising tells us about cholesterol. Now the question is, what foods can really help with cholesterol and kidney health? Foods that really help include oats. This food is amazing for your kidneys and for cholesterol levels. It has a fermented soluble fiber called beta-glucan. 
It will form a gel-like substance that's a cholesterol magnet. It literally flushes it out of your system. And also apples. Apples are a nutrition powerhouse when it comes to lowering your cholesterol levels and protecting the kidneys. They contain a carbohydrate called pectin which latches onto cholesterol and helps to flush it out of your body. But this pectin is only present in the peel of the fruit, so don't peel your apples. And also eat more foods rich in omega-3 such as chia seeds, flax seeds, and walnuts. You see, during clinical trials, a higher intake of omega-3 fatty acids has been linked to lower bad cholesterol levels in blood. This is why I always recommend to also supplement this essential nutrient. Omega-3. Taking omega-3 fatty acid supplements has also been linked to reduce kidney damage in patients with CKD. And there is evidence that it can help with high blood pressure, one of the leading causes of CKD, and also cholesterol levels, triglycerides, inflammation, and more. Now, as I was saying, taking omega-3s is something I really recommend. This is because omega-3s are proven to help kidney health by several very large reviews of studies. One large review of studies conducted on nine trials comprising 444 patients concluded that this remedy significantly reduced the risk of dialysis and is associated with a lower risk of proteinuria. And this makes this supplement one of the most tested and most effective ways of improving your kidney function. Here you can see the most commonly used doses for this essential nutrient. 500 mg a day is what is most often recommended, by the way. Now, a very important question you may ask. Why should I change the way I eat if I can keep cholesterol under control with statins? There is no doubt that statins do what they promise. They keep your cholesterol down in most of the cases. What's the problem with statins then? Like for many other prescription medications, there is some scientific debate over whether or not statins safe for people with kidney disease. There are studies that link statins to kidney damage. This is especially true for patients in the advanced stages of CKD and for those who need to take statins in high doses. High potency statins in particular were linked to acute kidney injury which means that they can damage the kidneys in a very short amount of time. Another drawback of statins is that they deplete ubiquinone in the body also known as coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. This is a vitamin-like substance that's in every cell of your body. Every living cell, human, animal, or plant, contains Q10. Its other name is ubiquinone to reflect its ubiquitous distribution. And when there is not enough of this molecule in the body, fatigue is just one of the symptoms. Studies have even associated low levels of CoQ10 to kidney damage. So if you plan on keep taking stunts, you may want to consider supplementing CoQ10. It may make you feel a lot better very fast as it fights some of the side effects of statins and it will help protecting your kidneys. Okay guys, if you follow me regularly, now you may ask, is everything doctors prescribe bad for the kidneys? And say it's antibiotics, proton pump inhibitors, and now also ARBs, ACE inhibitors, and even statins are dangerous. How is this even possible? Well, this has to do with the job the kidneys have in the body. The kidneys filter out toxins and poisons. And there is no doubt that taking medications regularly means that way more toxins have to be filtered out. It's not a perfect system. But obviously, there are certain medications that you 100% need. This is why doctors should carefully weigh the benefits of taking blood pressure medications, statins, and more against the risks for people with kidney problems. This is never an easy choice, and today the medical field is split in two when it comes to prescribing many of these medications. What you should do, in my opinion, is to focus on what works without side effects. There is no doubt that healthy lifestyle choices such as exercising regularly and following a kidney-friendly diet can make a huge difference because they work on the cause of the problem, not on the symptom. I can't believe I didn't know that. And guys, it's when you make the right lifestyle changes, those that can give your doctor the possibility of lowering your medications, that your kidneys will really start to improve. There are also remedies that can really help achieving this result. And without causing the same problems, medications do. One is a certain vitamin that is widely considered a very effective treatment against high cholesterol levels. 
But supplementing this vitamin also comes with significant benefits in terms of kidney function. I'm talking about niacin or vitamin B3. Niacin is an essential nutrient that should often be supplemented by those with kidney problems. Having enough niacin in the body is needed for good health. Niacin helps to convert nutrients into energy, create cholesterol and fats, create and repair DNA, and exert antioxidant effects. One role of niacin is to release prostaglandins or chemicals that help your blood vessels widen, improving blood flow and reducing blood pressure. So you really don't want the level of this vitamin to be too low. You can also get some niacin from foods. It occurs naturally in many foods including greens, quinoa, muesli, wild rice and corn on the cob. And when supplementing it, the daily intake for this vitamin in those with kidney disease is around 20 milligrams. But if you want to benefit from the cholesterol-lowering properties this vitamin offers, the dose must be a lot higher, starting from 500 mg per day. These high doses could, however, pose risks such as liver damage, gastrointestinal problems. So don't treat yourself with over-the-counter niacin supplements. Instead, talk to your doctor and see if a niacin treatment is appropriate for you. But remember that at the low daily recommended doses, niacin is safe for everyone. And there is another supplement which is perfectly safe and very beneficial that can make a huge difference in managing cholesterol levels. This is a form of soluble fiber that literally binds dietary fats in the intestine, reducing cholesterol levels. This is psyllium husk. Psyllium is a form of fiber made from the husk of the plantain of other plant's seeds. This supplement is pure soluble fiber. It mixes with water to form a gel-like substance that you can drink before your main meals. This helps slow down the delivery of digested food from the stomach to the intestines, which is great to lower cholesterol levels. It really works, by the way. You should see it in real life. It's incredible. A study pulled findings from 28 trials in people with normal and high cholesterol levels. These high numbers mean that the results they had are very likely to be trustworthy. And this study found out that the daily dose of about 10 grams of psyllium husk taken before the main meals lowered harmful LDL cholesterol by 30 mg per DL when taken for at least 3 weeks. And as an added bonus, according to several studies, high dietary fiber intake is associated with decreased inflammation and a slower progression of chronic kidney disease, even in patients in the advanced stages. So there is one more reason to consider adding psyllium husk. Now guys, if you want to see what steps are a must for those with CKD that are set to reverse the progression of the disease and get some of their kidney function back, in this video up here, I've shared with you a remedy that was used in 1918 patients to significantly lower creatinine levels. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.